Today, let's discuss how Karuk was probably the most underrated avatar ever, and how Yang Chin might have been one of the more overrated ones. Hey guys, welcome to my Geek Talk. Today, I wanna to talk about some Avatar Kyoshi stuff. If you guys have not read Avatar Rise of the Kyoshi or Shadow of the Kyoshi, click away from this video. This is definitely a spoiler filled review. So definitely an after you read Shadow of the Kyoshi. But a big thing that happened in the book was a huge reveal of the backstories of not only Yang Chin, but Karuk as well. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this in today's video is because it's a really interesting topic about the reputation of certain avatars. A lot of the fan base also agreed that Karuk was probably the worst avatar ever and that Yang Chin was one of the best in the same way that the people in this world did. But as we see from this book, there might be a different narrative and we get more insight into why those reputations even came about. First, let's read the passage from the book, the first passage that would get an indication that something is up. It reads, most spirits tend to give me a wide berth. Why? Uh, asked Kiyoshi. He didn't want to say, but he was talking to himself. Lying was pointless because I used to hunt them. And this is incredible because, you know, this I think happened at the end of one of the chapters or end of one of the scene breaks where you're like, what, you used to hunt spirits? You're okay, we thought you were sucky already, but now you're definitely a terrible person. You're a terrible avatar. You were just indiscriminately hunting spirits. And the reason we think this is because uh, one of the characters, his name is Lauga, talked about how Karuk was one of the greatest hunters in history whether we're talking about avatars or whatever he was the greatest hunter and we think that this is coming about because you know he's from the water tribes he's used to you know hunting for himself and that's prided in those tribes is being able to hunt especially as a as a male uh, figure and a male leader so he transplants that to the spirits and you know as we're reading it we're like well okay he just sucks even more and then the prose even goes on to kind of feed into this mentality that we should have as the reader if slaying beasts in this physical world no longer pose a challenge then it wasn't so far fetch that a reckless, thrill-seeking adventurer like Karuk would turn his eye towards spirits, being the avatar would have given him the means. But as we come to understand later in the story, and I'm gonna go kind of out of order, but we don't learn about this until the very end of the book, but Yang Chen talks about why he had to do this in the first place. So what's happening in the story right now, of course, is that the dark spirits, or there are dark spirits who are trying to wiggle their way into the mortal world and basically cause havoc. Kind of like what we had with uh, High Bay and uh, the first book, and then, you know, other uh, dark spirits like Old Iron who try to come back and like, you know, fight off the humans who were destroying the, the world. So all this is happening and Karuk takes it upon himself to defeat these dark spirits. So when Kiyoshi finally communes with Yang Chin, this is what's stated. I, Kiyoshi, asked Karuk, but he wouldn't tell me. Did he provoke them? Turn them dark somehow? No, Kiyoshi. The air avatar had no hesitation in answering, only an underlying sadness. I did. And then the prose goes on to say this. I tried my best to nurture human growth in the four nations, she said. When people inevitably butted heads against the spirits, I sided with humans more often than not. The heart walker of Yao Ping Mountain, the phoenix eels living in the underground caverns of my Inca, General Old Iron. And of course we know about Old Iron because he shows up in the Rift comics and we get the little backstory about that. If you haven't seen, I have a review about that as well. You can check that out somewhere around here, around my head. But the reading goes on to say this. The poor boy thought it was his duty to maintain my legacy and reputation because everybody thinks that she's amazing. So he did it alone without sharing his burden. I might have done things differently had I known how much pain I'd be causing my successor. So it's it's really Yang Chen's fault. It's all her fault because, and not really her fault. I mean, she made the choice to side with humans because she herself is primarily human. She's not spirit. I mean, she is supposed to be this bridge between the two worlds, but it was her personal choice, just in the same way that it was the choice of the uh, firebending avatar before uh, Roku to, you know, focus just on Fire Nation. So of course, you know, that's fine. Like that, that is your choice, but you do have to realize that there's going to be issues with that. But what I like so much about this is that the reason why she is so put on a pedestal and why she's so revered by the people of the Four Nations in general is because she sided with humans. So of course, since we're getting this narrative mostly through humans and, and what they're dealing with, yes, everybody's gonna be like, Yang Chen's the best, Yang Chen's the best, but the spirits are like, no, she's not the best. She never chose us or she hardly ever chose us. Old Iron was pissed off. All these other, apparently we getting, you know, insights to some of these other spirits who were mad at her as well. And that festered over her lifetime and it bleeded over into Karuk's 
timeline and he had to deal with the dark spirits but he knew how important it was that everybody you know was in love with yang chen as we saw at the beginning of the kiyoshi book people were praying to yang chen whenever kiyoshi was coming to like shut down their criminal activities he wanted to protect that and he took it upon himself that hey you know what i'll let people think that i'm a whatever avatar i'm gonna take care of these dark spirits and hold the reputation that yang chen have he's actually one of the best avatars not only is he one of the best avatars in terms of his personality and, and what he went through and, and the sacrifice he made for his own reputation to you know help someone else's but also just his power levels and that's what i want to talk about next because some of the things that he was doing in terms of fighting off these avatars actually affected his own lifespan. The reason he is one of the youngest avatars to die that we know, I, mean, there, I think there might be even younger avatars. Have you seen my other video I did about, you know, the early brutal history of the avatars? But the reason he died as young as he did is because he was taking on these dark spirits. He confirmed what Karuk had already guessed, that coming into contact with these dark creatures and destroying them was causing damage to his own spirit. Nyahita repaired what he could, but admitted a permanent toll would be taken each time another of these battles was fought. Already, Karuk was going to be out of the running for longest era in the Avatar history books. That is huge. To me, that is huge. That That is the... It's kind of like, and I equated this in my actual review, that he's sort of like the Dark Knight, in which Batman pretty much takes on the mantra of being the bad guy, even though he's doing good for the city, he's doing good for Gotham. Karuk is doing the same thing here. Like the, the nations all thought that he was just like a wishy-washy, like he just, you know, went with the flow. He didn't care about, you know, the four nations or being the avatar, but really on his off times at night, he was taking on dark avatars that were about to wreak havoc on the world and didn't let anyone know about it. Not his, not team avatar, cause he didn't want them to know about what Yang Chen did. He didn't want to know, he didn't want anyone else to know in the world what she was up to. He did it himself and he knew exactly what he was getting into. He knew that he would have a bad reputation and he, he I just love that. And to be fair, I didn't really care about Karuk at all, really, in the uh, the fan base or, uh, you know, the narrative of him. But I wouldn't say that I hated him either. I didn't have the hate that some, you know, other people in the fan base were. But now that he has this, he low-key might be in contention for one of my favorite avatars. In fact, I might say he's my favorite avatar right now. Uh, granted, this is like, you know, really fresh and this is new information. So, of course, I'm going to be feeling these kinds of feelings because it's new and it's exciting. But, I mean, honestly, the kind of sacrifice that he made is way more impactful to me than some other things that happen in the lore. Maybe the closest thing to me that I've seen would be Korra at the end of book three when she took on Zaheer. But other than that, I think Karuk is my dude right now. Like, that, like the stuff that he was dealing with is great. And even, uh, like I was saying before, his fights with the other dark spirits not only did it take a toll on him on his lifespan, but his skill and his ability to even fight them, I think is incredible. Hey guys, quick break uh, in the middle of this video, but just letting you guys know that I now offer memberships on my channel. Uh, if you look at the bottom, if you're on desktop, you can see a join button. Uh, if you're on mobile, you can click on the link in the description box. But if you wanna get more content from me, some special incentives, go ahead and check that out and become a member of the Bandelay Squad. Back to the video. So this sequence that I'm about to read is about his fight specifically with uh, Father Glowworm, which is the big spirit that takes place in Shadow of the Kiyoshi. Their fight nearly created a gaping hole in the boundary between realms. Father Glowworm was stronger than the other spirits, and Karuk was too stubborn to die. Their energies bit into each other like blades clashing edge to edge, leaving permanent notches. The only other time we've seen people like create fissures between the mortal and spirit realm was at the end of book four when uh, the big, you know, Kuvira mech beam, spirit beam shot at Korra and then she had to like break it in and like, you know, that opened up a rift between the spirit and the, the mortal realm. That power is, is typically pretty uh, stellar and to see that Karuk was able to maintain this kind of a fight and fight for weeks against Glowworm. It's just, it, that is a, a, a feat that is one of the most incredible to me. It, it, it doesn't, not only because of the, the power scale and, and what it does, like the riffs and everything like that, but just the heart, the heart that it takes to, to do that. Like even the line, the description that, you know, Karuk refused to die. I love this guy. I love this guy. I love this sacrifice. I love characters like this who look like one way, but then, you know, you find out more about them in the background and realize that they're actually really incredible. They're not the worst avatar. They're actually one of the best in terms of power level and just 
their own sensibilities because because he knew what he was getting into and I, I just love love it so much i'm sorry i'm like ranting right now i didn't really script this out i just wanted to talk about it really bad because i felt like it was one of my favorite favorite parts uh, of the book and i wanted to share that with you guys and i wanted to hear what you guys think uh do you, does this change your opinion of karuk does this change your opinion of yang chin and i actually don't actually even disagree with yang chin if, if i was in her situation I most certainly probably would side with humans more often than not, even with the old Iron situation that we know about from the Rift comics. I, I can't say that she was necessarily wrong. I mean, again, you, you have to make these choices as, as an avatar and you have to live with them. And, and I think she understood that to an extent, but she didn't understand how bad it really would have gotten, you know, for, you know, her successors and then the world going forward. So, I mean, again, like, does this change your opinion of Yang Chin? It doesn't really change my opinion of her. I do get it. And I, if anything, this changes my opinion of how well they're, they're treating their world and, and, and in terms of the creators and, and the writers who are, who are dealing with these stories. I want more stories like this. I, I, I want Avatar to continue telling these, these, these deep narratives, these nuances between reputation and what is the actual thing. Like, the, I always was fascinated with the idea of history and the representation of history versus what actually happened. Like, even, you know, the things that we do in our own world with our own humanity, how much of it is real, how much of it has just been told through time and has been, you know, sugar-coated and, and all that i mean we already see that with today's day and age but this is incredible like again i keep telling people to do this read the book if you haven't read the book already i mean you shouldn't have watched this video anyway if you haven't read the book but read the book these books are so great and also i just love avatar <laughs> like avatar right now is my jam right now but let me know what you guys think in the comments below about karuk and yang chen and, and the idea of him or the reason why he died so young and and his reputation and, and how he took that upon himself i want to hear about this i want to discuss this with you guys as always i'll see you guys on the next one peace love and remember be water my friends